Okay, so let's see if you can answer this basic algebra question. And the question is the following. We want to multiply 2t to the 1 third by 5t squared plus t to the 2 thirds power. What is this equal to? Well, that is the question. And if you can figure this out, put that into the comment section and try not to use a calculator. But if you absolutely need one, well, go ahead and use it. But again, try not to use a calculator. Put your answer into the comment section. Now, the title of this video, you see a symbol like this. It looks like an upside down V. And just in case you don't know what that is, that's called a caret symbol in math. So let's go ahead and talk about that symbol real quick. So if I want to express T to the one third, you could uh, kind of type this out this way, T, and then you put this little upside down symbol like this. It's, again, it's called a caret in math, and then you put your one third like this. This right here is the same as T to the one third. And this uh, upside down V oftentimes is the button that you need to use on your scientific calculators to express a power. So in other words, if you wanted to find two to the fifth power, oftentimes you have to go two, and you put that little caret right there to get your exponent, and then you type in five. Okay, so just in case you didn't understand the title, that's what that is, and you can use that uh, symbol, I believe you can use that symbol in the comment section if you know the answer to express your exponents, but I'm gonna show you the right answer in just one second, then of course I'm gonna fully explain how to do this prom. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. Again, we're going to be taking this thing and we're gonna multiply it by this stuff right here. What is the correct answer? Well, here it is. We have 10 uh, t to the 7 thirds power plus 2t. Okay, now if you got this right, well, we got to celebrate by giving a nice little happy face in A plus a 100%, and we'll throw in a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you are a professional expert in the area of working with exponents and the distributive property, okay? This is really, really important stuff. Now, some of you might be looking at the question and you might be saying, wait, well, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm not so sure this is basic algebra. This looks a little advanced. Well, it, you may not see this uh, type of problem in, let's say, pre-algebra. So if you're taking a pre-algebra course, uh, this, you know, even at pre-algebra level, you should be able to do something like this. So if you're in pre-algebra, stick with me for a couple minutes, you'll be able to understand this. But certainly, if you are taking like a full one-year algebra course, this is definitely a problem that you should be able to understand. But I'm going to walk you through it. So even if you don't know what's going on, I'll have you looking like this in a couple of minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what we need to know in order to do this problem. Well, there's two uh, skills here that we really have to understand in order to solve this problem or to simplify this expression. And the first is the distributive property. This is one of my uh, most favorite properties in math. It's such a cool property. I'll show you why here in a second. And then the second thing uh, we need to understand is how to work with powers and exponents. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get into it and let's take a look at the distributive property. And the distributive property is um, a property that allows us to multiply uh, using some uh, using a different um, approach. Okay, I'll, I'll kind of say it in general terms like that, and I'll be more specific here in a second. So let's go and take a look at this problem. So this in math, this is two times ten. Now notice I have parentheses, but this is the same thing as two times ten. We could write it this way, or two times ten, but we could write multiplication. Uh, this, if we put a number outside of parentheses like this, this means 2 times 10, okay? So, of course, 2 times 10, I'm pretty sure you know, is 20. All right, no problem there, but let's go ahead and take a look at the distributive property using this simple example. It's such an awesome property. Again, uh, it is one of these things that I think makes math fun. Well, you know, you might be saying, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Math is not fun. I don't like math. Well, you'll like the distributive property because it's going to help us solve this problem. Okay, so the problem here, right, is 2 times 10. Now, let's take this 10 
and let's kind of uh, express 10 using a sum or a difference. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at this right here. So this problem is two times 10, but I'm expressing 10 as seven plus three. Now I'm gonna finish out this example here in a second, but we can express 10 in any number of ways. I could say 10 is the same thing as nine plus one, or I could say 10 is 11 minus one. So anytime we uh, express a value using sums or difference, differences, we could still do multiplication, um, and you'll see here in a second. So this is a, just a real um, general description of the distributive property without being overly technical about it right now. So hopefully everybody understands what I'm doing. Okay, so 10, I'm going to think of it as 7 plus 3. If there's any number of different ways I can think of 10, but why am I doing this? Well, I'm going to show you the distributive property. Okay, so the distributive property is the following. When we are multiplying a number, okay, times another number, well, we can think of this number here or this value, if we, if we can express it as a sum or a difference, well, we could still do multiplication, but the distributive property really is the following. With this outside number, okay, this product is gonna be equal to this number being multiplied by this number. So let's go ahead and do that now. So two times seven is what? Oh, well, we'll figure that out in one second. And then take this two, and we're gonna multiply it by this three. Okay, but of course this is an addition problem. So we'll have plus two times three. Now let me formally uh, kind of uh, define the distributive property right here, because if I just gave this to you, you might be like, oh, this looks like too much algebra. So A times B plus C, is equal to AB plus uh, AC. This is the formal definition of the distributive property, but what does this mean? Well, it means if I'm multiplying by a sum, okay, this is what it's equal to. So for example, if I was doing this problem right here, to, I'll get back to uh, my train of thought here in a second. If I was doing the problem two times nine plus one, well, what would we do? Well, we know the order of operation and we understand order of operations, we understand PEMDAS, right? Most of you out there be like, oh yes, Mr. YouTube Math Fan. We got to do parentheses first, so we'll go ahead and add what's inside parentheses. So this would be two times nine plus one, of course is 10, and then this will be 20. So why are we doing all this crazy stuff right here? Why am I like, you know, showing off using a distributive property to do this problem? Well, because I'm going to be doing this with variables in just one second. I just want to show you that this thing works. Okay, so the distributive property, again, states that we can multiply a number to a sum or difference by taking that number and multiplying by this number, so that's two times seven, plus this number times this number, that's two times three. So let's go ahead and see how this pans out. So two times seven is 14, and two times three is six, and 14 plus six is 20. Okay, so this is an, an illustration of the distributive property. But let's do this a different way, okay? Let's just kind of have fun with this. And we'll do the same prompt, but instead of seven plus three, let's just kind of uh, pick some other numbers. Maybe you want to kind of test this out on your own. So uh, let's see here, two times 10. Maybe we'll think of this as nine plus one, okay? So two times nine plus one. Now, of course, nine plus one is 10, and 10 times two is 20, but let's apply the distributive property. Okay, so what we're going to do here, just so you get used to it, is you're going to take this value, this number, and multiply by this number. So 2 times 9, we'll write that out right here, 2 times 9. Now this is an addition problem, plus, okay, and then we take this number and we multiply by this number right there, which of course is 2 times 1. And when we do that, we get what? 9 times 2 is 18, plus 2 times uh, 1 is 2, and look at that we get 20. Now this can go on and on and on. Let me just go ahead and just show you how crazy uh, the distributive property is. Matter of fact, let's just make something up. Let's call two times 10. Uh, we'll use um, uh, sums and differences. How about, uh, let's say we have 12 uh, minus one, uh, and let's use another minus one. Okay, so 12 minus one minus one is 10. And the distributive property, there is no, um, rule on how many sums or different it has to be sums or differences but the same thing will apply so let's just do this here we're going to multiply two by each one of these numbers and let's see what happens so two times 12 will give us uh, what well that give us 24 minus two times this negative one will give us a minus two 
okay? Oh, actually, yes, minus 2, and then this 2 times this negative 1 will also get us a minus 2. So 24 minus 2 minus 2, this is minus 4. So 24 minus 4 is 20. Okay, so that is the distributive property. You can have all kinds of fun with it, and hopefully you have the basic uh, sense of what it is. Now, let's go ahead and apply the distributive property uh, with variables because the distributive property uh, doesn't just work with numbers. It works with variables, and that's why we need it in algebra. So here's a situation where we have 2x times x plus 3. So how do we simplify this? How, uh, you know, how do we kind to, uh, how do we do this multiplication? Well, we use the distributive property. Okay, so we're going to take this 2x and we're going to multiply it by x. So that'll be 2x times x, and then this 2x times that 3 will be 2x plus 3. And of course, this is an addition problem, so we'll put plus right there. And let's go ahead and simplify the result. Okay, so 2 times x times x. x times x is equal to x squared. So this is going to be equal to 2x squared. And then 2 times x times 3. Here we have to multiply the coefficients. So this would be equal to 6x. Okay, so here is the answer, 2x squared plus 6x. And I think most of you out there, uh, you know, can follow along with this and understand what I'm doing. But it's going to get a little bit more interesting with the actual problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. But before we take a look at the problem, I need you to take a look at this. And that is the subscribe button. So just focus your attention on that button and go ahead and depress it. And if you're going to do that, go ahead and hit that notification button as well. I definitely need your support. I do a tremendous amount of videos. I love to teach math. It does me no good to be, you know, have all this math knowledge for myself. You know, I want to be able to uh, share it with people that can benefit from my math instruction. So if you're getting something out of this video or if you like my content, the easiest way to support this channel is to buy subscribing. So thank you so much. Matter of fact, this is the way I look right now. And now let's get into the actual prompt. OK, so here is the actual prompt. All right. Now we need to observe that we have a multiplication situation. We have this term and we're going to multiply by this term. But this is a sum. OK, so this is. Uh, you know, these terms here are being separated by a plus symbol. So uh, we need to be thinking the distributive properties. We're going to take this, we're going to multiply by this, and then we're going to add it times this whole thing times that. Okay, so again, an application of the distributive property. So 2t to the one-third times 5t squared plus 2t to the one-third times t to the two-thirds power. All right, now hopefully you understand that. And if you do, what we need to understand now is how to deal with um, powers and exponents when we are multiplying powers with the same base. Now, I know that may sound kind of confusing, but this is a property of powers and exponents that you definitely need to understand. And it uh, indicates how to, what we need to do when we're multiplying uh, powers with the same base. Now, let me just make sure you understand. So if I have two to the fifth power, Okay, this right here has two parts. This little number up here is the exponent. This big number down here is the base. The whole thing here is the is a power. So when we are multiplying two powers with the same base, in other words, uh, this example here, x squared times x to the fifth, I'm looking at the basis. I'm, I'm not even looking at the exponents. I'm looking at, are these the same x and x? These are the same, so I can apply uh, this property and the property states if you're multiplying powers with the same base What we do is just simply add the exponents. So our add the respective exponents how many you have So I have x squared times x to the fifth in this example. Oh look the bases are the same So we're going to keep that base and the exponents which are 2 and 5 and that is equal to 7 and this uh, hopefully will make uh, make sense because let's just think about it here I have x squared that's x uh, times x Here's x to the fifth, x times x times x times x times x. If I multiply these together, I'm going to get x to the seventh power. But what if one of these here has a different base? What if this is like y? Okay, x squared times y to the fifth. Well, here, these bases are not the same. So this uh, property doesn't apply because I have x squared here and I got a bunch of y's. So the answer here is simply going to be x squared y to the fifth. All right, now hopefully you have an understanding uh, of this property. And there's other properties when it comes to powers and exponents. Now, anything that I'm covering right now 
is troubling you, and maybe you're an algebra student, I'm going to leave links to all my main courses, pre-algebra, algebra 1. I would probably suggest you check out my algebra 1 course. If you're not a math student, I'm going to give you a great course here in a second. So let's put this all together now and uh, simplify this. Okay, so we have 2t to the 1 third times 2, or I'm sorry, 2t to the 1 third, 1 third, excuse me, times 5t squared. Okay, so when you're multiplying terms, two terms in algebra, we multiply the coefficients first, right? The numbers, right? So 2 times 5 is 10. And now we have to deal with uh, figuring out what t to the 1 third times t squared is. So I'll just organize it just like this. We'll clean this up here in a second. And then here we have 2 times t to the 1 third times t to the 2 thirds. We'll clean that up in one moment. And again, we're dealing with fractions. That's why I said don't use a calculator, but I know a lot of you don't like fractions. But let's go ahead and deal with them anyway. So uh, let's go down here and let's just notice, what do I do here? This is a multiplication of powers. While I'm looking at the bases, are the bases the same? Yes, I have a T and a T. So I can multiply these powers. I can, I can multiply these together because the bases are the same by adding the exponents. So this is going to be T to the one-third plus two. I'll figure this out in one second. And then over here, I have two times t to the one-third times t to the two-thirds. The bases, again, are the same. So I can just add the exponents, which would be one-third plus two-thirds. Okay, so now we get to have fun because we get to deal with some fractions here. So one-third plus two-thirds is what? That's just two and one-thirds. And one-third plus two-thirds is what? Three-thirds, which is one. So that's this uh, t to the first, okay? And in algebra, when something is to the first power, we just never write that. We just write t, uh, t by itself, or 2t. So uh, if you had this answer, by the way, uh, 10t to the 2 uh, and 1 third plus 2t, that is correct as well. So nice job. But I am writing uh, this exponent as an improper, or this mixed number exponent as an improper fraction. That's a little bit cleaner and a little bit more presentable in algebra. So we take this three, multiply by two, that's six plus one or seven over three. So this is our final answer. Okay, now if some of you out there are thinking, boy, I knew this way back in the good old 1970s, 80s, maybe 1960s or 1950s. In my math program, I've had students that were, you know, all ages, I mean, literally all ages, 90 years old, and down okay and it's been a tremendous pleasure to have students of all ages because they bring it's just you know fantastic to be able to um you know listen to some of these stories that i've heard through the years matter of fact i had a particular uh a student who um in my math program taking a math course that sent me a program or a math prom that he remembered from world war ii and it was a very impressive geometry problem and it's just amazing i mean if you are not doing anything with your time right now uh you know maybe you're just in, looking for a hobby or maybe you're just trying to find a good you know uh, way to pass some time if you're you know you know don't want to watch netflix movies anymore you know, learning math it has so much positive benefits. And let me just tell you very quickly about my new math course. I just launched this uh, within the last month or so. It's called Math Skills Rebuilder. And I designed this course specifically for adults that want to relearn math or maybe never really felt that they got a good shot at learning math the first time. Maybe you had a string of some bad teachers. Maybe something happened, you know, when you were going to school that, you know, uh, put you off track. Maybe you just never felt good about yourself that, yeah, you know, I just don't understand math. There's all sorts of reasons. But listen, I'm telling you right now, if you want to learn math, you could be successful in math. Absolutely. It does take a lot of, a lot of hard work. You can definitely got to immerse yourself in the topic or in the subject. But what you need most, you know, be, if you have all that is great, comprehensive, detailed math instruction. That's what I can offer you. So check out my math skills. We build a course in that course. I cover all arithmetic, basic mathematics, a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, even some trigonometry, basic trigonometry, and some basic probability and statistics. It is a self-paced, well-rounded course. And uh, even if you are a math student, but you just kind of need a good review, that's an excellent course. But uh, if you are taking algebra, this is a you know type of problem that you should be able to handle uh, pretty easily. So hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.